So here we are at the Church of the Holy Supper. Behind the one to the left would be another one. They're working on it. And the rock where it was too bad. crucified, the station number 12, would be behind this wall. So if we go inside, I will show you that. And we will see the closer so you can see the whole thing inside. And there are the two doors we're going to head on down into this area here. This right here is the 10th station of the cross where Jesus is stripped of his garments. I wanted to get a quick shot of this before we went on inside the main church proper. So here we are, we walked in those doors and we're looking up here. And I'll give you a sweep of what this looks like. mosaic that depicts Jesus being taken down from the cross and then uh, his body anointed and placed uh, in the tomb for burial. Right down here below is station number 13. This is the rock where supposedly, supposedly Jesus' uh, body was placed for uh, anointment. So here we are in the chapel of uh, Helena, Helen, and this is a view peeking through the window here into the rock of Golgotha. So this is where they believe um, this is part of the rock where Jesus was crucified. Looking up now into the rotunda area, this was uh, damaged by the fire in the 1800s and it was uh, rebuilt quite a bit. But uh, quite beautiful as you can see now. The mosaic over there, just above the altar, is station number 11, where Christ is there to the cross. This section with the whole mosaics was done by Antonio Barlutti, the Italian architect belonging to the Franciscans. So the left section, the left section, the orthodox. Again, they have different denominations, main ones. Greeks, Armenians, Franciscans, and the smaller ones is the Assyrians and the Coptic. Please follow me this way. This is the 12th station here. Altar to the Rock of Golgotha. Station number 12, where Christ died on the cross. And if you look carefully, as we will be going through, below the glass, you will see there is a crack in the rock. During the crucifixion, there was thunder, lightning, and earthquake. And the evidence of the crack, the earthquake crack, will be seen from here and also in the lower part. Here is that crack, uh, crack in the rock. Uh, that he was referring to earlier. And it's right here to the right of this altar area. <coughs> Here's the altar that's right in front of it and down underneath 
you can reach down under there. Once you're finished, you and, uh, will heal. Touch Golgotha. Watch your head. Here I am now at the front. This is the Greek Orthodox entrance to the tomb area. Well, I'm going to have much better uh, color than Dad did, but uh, maybe a little bit better. It's really gloomy right here. Here's the back side. This is the Coptic entrance uh, to the tomb area. Two separate instance, uh, entrances. Back again now to the Greek Orthodox side. Give you a side shot of this area. This is looking down into the Armenian church. Uh, Helen had them dig all this area out. And supposedly, tradition has it, they found the three crosses, uh, Jesus and the two thieves that were crucified together. Okay, Philip and I came back for one last visit to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And we walked in. I wanted to give you a better shot of the dome area. It's up at the very top, so we start here at the high altar, and we go on up. And uh, it's really beautiful, as you see the gold area up here. Coming into view. Again, this was all damaged uh, by a fire in the early 1800s, and it was redone. Uh, which is why it's so nice today. Jesus in the center with the apostles, uh, Mary around. And there it is. All the way to the top. Here you can see the crowds that have gathered to get into the Greek Orthodox entrance to the tomb area. And again, I'm, I'm really trying to beat Dad's uh, shots of this. He, he has some that look like they're black and white. And I'm, I've been trying to get you some color views, but the lighting is just so bad right here at the entrance, it's tough to do.